Even before World War II began, tensions in the Balkan states, particularly in the Kingdom of Yugoslavia, Albania and Bulgaria, were high. Host to a variety of different languages, religions and ethnicities, the Balkans had been in turmoil for decades. And as the Second World War kicked off, the divides within the region only grew more pronounced. When World War II began, Bulgaria and Yugoslavia declared neutrality. However, pressure from the Germans would soon force their hands. Because Bulgaria relied on Germany for nearly 65% of its trade, the Bulgarians sought favor with the Germans and hoped to regain territories lost in the Second Balkan War. They didn't want to explicitly choose a side though. For similar reasons, Yugoslavia also tried to remain neutral, but internal conflicts between ethnic groups destabilized the kingdom. In particular, the pro-fascist Ustasha wanted to align themselves with the Axis independent Croatian state, while the Serbians sought to join the Allies. The Balkan campaign officially began with Italy's invasion of Greece through Albania in October 1940, but the Hellenic army put up a strong resistance and by November they had stalled the invasion near the Albanian border. Because Italy failed to advance into Greece, Germany pressured Bulgaria into signing the Tripartite Pact on the 1st of March 1941. This meant the Germans could send troops through Bulgaria to aid the Italians. Yugoslavia's regent Prince Paul soon followed, giving in to German pressure and reluctantly signing the Tripartite Pact on the 25th of March 1941. Unfortunately for the regent prince, this made him very unpopular and the Serbian nationalist Royal Yugoslav Army Air Force staged a coup d'etat just days later, replacing him with King Peter II. Hitler was not a fan of this leadership shaker. Ten days after King Peter II ascended to the throne, the Axis invaded Yugoslavia, and by the 17th of April, Yugoslavia signed an armistice forcing the young king and his ministers to flee to Britain where they set up a government in exile. Greece fell shortly after, and by June 1941, the Axis controlled the Balkans. After their unconditional surrender, the occupied Balkan states were divided amongst the conquering powers. Bulgaria, despite not actively participating in the invasion, occupied Thrace, Macedonia and Pomoravi. In Macedonia, the majority welcomed the Bulgarians with open arms as many of them were ethnically Bulgarian and had faced persecution under Yugoslav Serbian rule. Germans and Italians controlled other parts of the Balkans and helped establish the new puppet state, the independent state of Croatia, in April 1941. The Prime Minister and leader of the ultra-nationalist Ustasha, Ante Pavelic, immediately began the systematic genocide of Serbian, Roma and Jewish people along with fascist dissenters. Quickly, resistances sprung up in Greece, Albania and Yugoslavia. However, because of ethnic and ideological differences, there were two distinct Yugoslavian resistance groups, the Royal Chetniks and the Communist Partisans. The Chetniks, led by former Serbian general Draža Mahalovic, were initially made up of Royal Yugoslav Army troops who'd fled to the mountains of Serbia after the surrender. With the support of the Western Allies and King Peter II, the Chetniks were better equipped than the Partisans in the beginning. Conversely, the communist partisans, led by Josip Broz Tito, were poorly organized and badly armed. However, they enjoyed some support from Spanish Civil War veterans and the Soviet Union. Unlike the Chetniks, who based their resistance on the foundation of protecting the Serbian identity, the partisans did not run along ethnic lines, instead fighting for communist ideological values. In early resistance efforts, the two groups tried to cooperate, but this alliance would not last because of the strife caused by ethnic and ideological differences. A rift formed between the two resistance groups in the autumn of 1941, after Axis forces retook control of the Uzacet territory that the partisans had liberated. The Chetniks largely blamed the partisans for the loss of Serbian territory within this area, and despite negotiations, the Chetniks turned openly hostile toward the partisans. In November 1941, the Chetniks began secretly getting supplies from the Italian forces. Additionally, the Chetniks worked with the Ustasha to combat the partisans who they saw as a common enemy. This impeded resistance efforts and aided the Axis who launched offensives against both groups throughout the war. The first of these offensives, Operation Southeast Croatia, 
took place in the winter and spring of 1942. The Germans, supported by the Italians and the Croatian Home Guard, killed 531 partisans and captured nearly 1,400 more. Tito and the partisan leaders evaded capture, however. During the operation, the Chetniks did not resist the Germans and granted them passage to the partisans. Because of this, the Central Communist Party declared the Chetniks traitors and ordered the partisans to cease any remaining cooperation with them. The second offensive, Operation Trio, took place in April and May 1942 in Bosnia and Herzegovina. While the Axis troops fought against both the Chetniks and the partisans, the two resistance groups also clashed with each other during this operation, which led to the Axis retaking most of the liberated land. Despite losing previously gained territory, the partisans continued to see increased support for their cause throughout the region. This support wasn't ideological in nature, but because of the brutality of the Axis forces that routinely tore through villages, raping women and killing anyone suspected of resistance. The partisans mainly employed guerrilla warfare, slowly gaining ground and support, including some aid from the Allies. In the liberated areas, the communists set up people's committees to act as civilian governments. In late 1942, German High Command grew concerned about a possible Allied invasion of the Balkans which would turn the tides in the resistance's favour. In January 1943, Hitler ordered another offensive, codenamed Fallweiss, to crush the partisans permanently. During Fallweiss, 90,000 Italian and German troops, as well as 15,000 Chetnik collaborators, launched an attack into partisan-held territory in Bosnia facing approximately 20,000 partisan troops. The Chetniks joined the Axis as part of their march on Bosnia, an attempt to not only take down the partisans, but also begin an ethnic cleanse of Bosnian Muslims. While over 11,000 partisans were killed, the remaining partisans narrowly escaped over the Neretva River by blowing up the bridges in their wake. In May 1942, another offensive, Fallschwarz, was launched. Despite the Chetniks fighting alongside the Axis during Fallweiss, Hitler worried they would side with the Allies if they invaded and ordered them to be captured and disarmed. During this operation, 127,000 Axis troops battled partisan forces in Bosnia and Montenegro, encircling the partisan headquarters between the 4th and 9th of June. Despite the odds, and while injured, Tito escaped again. The Germans retaliated by slaughtering left-behind partisans and civilians in nearby villages. This was a turning point for the partisans. The Allies and King Peter II, who had previously backed the Chetniks, now firmly favoured the partisans. Prime Minister Winston Churchill even ordered Brigadier General Fitzroy Maclean to join the group as an Allied liaison. Two months later, on the 8th of September, the Italians surrendered to the Allies. Of the 17 Italian divisions remaining in the Balkans, three full divisions immediately took up arms with the partisans two in Montenegro and one in Albania. By the end of 1943, the number of partisans in the Balkans had grown to 330,000. In the spring of 1944, the Germans launched one final offensive, aiming to eliminate Tito personally. This offensive was the most well-planned and included additional air raids on the Bosnian tower of Trova, the partisans' home base. As a result, the Allies deployed the Balkan Air Force, made up of Royal Air Force and South African Air Force units, in support of Tito, and the German operation ultimately failed. With increased air support in the Balkan region, the independent state of Croatia's Air Force and the Luftwaffe struggled to carry out further offensives. In June 1944, the partisans signed an agreement with the government in exile to form a new government that would include the communist partisans, the royalist Chetniks, and all ethnic groups in Yugoslavia. While some Chetniks defected to the partisans, others, including Mihailovic, refused. The tides continued to turn in Tito's favour. Throughout August and September 1944, Romania and Bulgaria surrendered and joined the Allies strengthening the region against Axis powers. In September, the Red Army and the Bulgarian Army entered Yugoslavia to prevent the Germans from withdrawing to Greece. By October, the partisans controlled most of eastern Yugoslavia, including Serbia, Macedonia and Montenegro. In the winter of 1944 and 1945, the partisans launched the Siemian Offensive to further expel Axis and Ustasha forces from Bosnia and Croatia. The remaining Chetniks, still led by Mihailovic, launched one last attack on Axis forces, hoping to gain favour with the Allies. Fighting the Ustasha and the Croatian Home Guard, they failed to gain any ground and their numbers dwindled. On the 8th of May 1945, Germany surrendered unconditionally, 
But the war wasn't over in the Balkans. Small skirmishes continued between the partisans and the remaining Axis forces, culminating in the battles of Polonia and Odjak, the latter ending 17 days after the German surrender. In November, the Federal People's Republic of Yugoslavia was established, united under the banner of communism despite ethnic and religious differences. In July 1946, Mihailovic and several other high Chetnik officials were tried and executed for treason. Ethnic divides and tension between groups in the Balkans led to chaotic resistance and untold destruction during the Second World War. Croatia, as a puppet state, committed a genocide second only to Hitler's while the Chetniks and the Partisans fought a quasi-civil war while also attempting to resist the Axis. Despite all the internal turmoil that arose during the war, the Partisans were the most effective anti-German resistance group in all of Europe. However, this came at a cost of at least a million dead and millions more displaced. But what do you think? Would a United Balkans front have stood up better against the Axis? If the Chetniks and Partisans had cooperated, would the tides have turned sooner? Let us know all that and more in the comments section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something new.